My name is Rick Renner, and I'm on the Sea of Galilee thinking about the night that Jesus and his disciples were headed across this lake to the other side. On the other side was the country of the Gadarenes, and Jesus, when he got there, was going to set free the demoniac of Gadara. It was going to be a great breakthrough in his ministry. But the Bible tells us while they were en route, something happened. Mark 4, 37 says, And there arose a great storm of wind. That word arose in Greek is the word genomai. It means out of nowhere. It was the last thing they would have expected that night. Well, think about it. Jesus' disciples, most of them by profession, worked on this lake. They were fishermen. They knew the weather of the sea. They knew the behavior of the water. And if a natural storm was brewing that night, they would have never gone. But the Bible tells us in Mark 4, 37, Genomai, out of nowhere. It took them by surprise. Completely off guard, there arose a great storm of wind. Not a thunderstorm, but a storm of wind. They could feel it, but they couldn't see it. It was turbulence in the atmosphere. This is what often happens to you and to me when we're on the way to a great breakthrough in our life. We're en route, we're on the way, excited to get there, when suddenly out of nowhere there arises a great storm of wind, spiritual opposition that tries to stop us. Just keep going. The wind will pass, the waves will cease, and you'll get where you need to be. That is what I'm gonna to talk to you about today. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insight and understanding from the Word of God. Here's Rick. Hey, I'm so glad you've joined me for today's program. Today we're gonna to continue our series, Taking Authority Over the Wind and Waves in Your Life. Yesterday we just got started, and today we're gonna to continue. But I'm offering you my series by the same name called Taking Authority Over the Wind and Waves in Your Life. It's five parts, comes in multiple formats. The back of the series says, Understanding how the devil operates is imperative if you're going to foil his assaults. When you're armed with knowledge about how the devil operates and about what you can do to overcome his attacks, you are positioned to win. And that's what this series is about. It comes with a great study guide. Anyway, order your copy today. And we're also offering you my book, which is called Dress to Kill, a Biblical Approach to Spiritual Warfare and Armor. Oh, I want you to have this book. This book will really make a difference in your life. And through the years, you will refer to this book over and over and over. Just before the program today, I was flipping through the pages. This book is just loaded. Wrestling with principalities and powers. What are the wiles, devices, and deceptions of the devil? Wow. Or how about an important message to remember? The message which we find in Ephesians chapter 6. This book is just loaded, a menace from heaven. That's who you are. God's anointed you to be a menace to the domain of darkness. You are anointed as a menace from heaven to undo the deeds of darkness. How do you do that? Well, all of that is in this book, and it comes with full color illustrations of Roman weaponry, which Paul describes in Ephesians chapter 6. Anyway, order your copy today. And when you contact us, let us know how to pray for you. We're here to pray for your needs, and we would love to know how to pray for you. But today I'm speaking to you from my series called Taking Authority Over the Wind and Waves in Your Life. And today we're going to begin in Mark chapter 4 and verse 35. In the last program, I gave you a personal testimony, and I want to review it very quickly. Many, many years ago, in the early years of our ministry, I was getting ready to publish a book called Life in the Combat Zone. If you don't have that book, order that book. That is a life-changing book, but it's called Life in the Combat Zone. Well, I didn't realize how prophetic the book was going to be in my life, because just as we were getting ready to publish it, I was thrust into a combat zone financially. Strange things begin to happen. Meetings begin to be canceled. Our partners who supported our ministry all of a sudden simultaneously stopped supporting us. There was no natural explanation for any of it. And right in front of me was the publishing of this book. And we needed a lot of money to publish that book. And suddenly the money dried up. 
And I found myself every day praying, God, we need money. We need money. Lord, we need money. In fact, I jokingly say you would have thought money was God's name because every time I looked up and every time I raised my hands, I said, money, money, money. Lord, we need money. And one day the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, Rick, you do not have a money problem. I said, what? What do you mean we don't have a money problem? He said, you don't have a money problem. And I became sarcastic with the Lord. And I said, then tell me what kind of money problem do we have? And the Lord said, all right, if you'll listen, I'll teach you. And he led me to Mark chapter 4 to the revelation that I'm sharing with you in this series. It profoundly changed my life. And I learned through the years that when you're on the brink of a breakthrough, that's when you need to be really spiritually vigilant because that normally is when the devil's going to attack. That's normally the moment he chooses to attack because he wants to stop your breakthrough. And that's what we now find when we come to Mark chapter 4. In Mark chapter 4, listen to verse 35. And the same day when the evening was come, Jesus said unto the disciples, let's pass over unto the other side. Very quickly reviewing, on the other side of the Sea of Galilee was the country of the Gadarenes. That's what we read in Mark chapter 5, verse 1. Look at it with me. And they came over unto the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes. And what was in the country of the Gadarenes? Well, listen to verse 2. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying, and cutting himself with stones. The demoniac of Gadara was living in the cliffs right across the Sea of Galilee where Jesus' ship was headed. And when you study how Matthew records this, in Matthew chapter 8, verse 28, he says that when Jesus got out of the ship there met him, two men with an unclean spirit. The word met is a Greek word which describes a hostile confrontation. These demons were not happy that Jesus showed up. Matthew tells us there were two. Mark tells us there was one. There's no conflict. Just Mark focuses on the one who's more demon-possessed than the other. But in Matthew 8, 28, the Bible says these men were exceedingly fierce so that no man might pass by that way. Exceedingly fierce is the Greek word kalopos. The word kalopos is only used two times in the New Testament. It's used in Matthew 8, 28. And it's also used in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1, where it is translated as the word perilous. But it describes something that is treacherous, something that's filled with high risk. If you get in the vicinity of it, it will pose a risk to you. It will place you in jeopardy because it is a harmful environment, exceedingly fierce. The Greek word kalopos describes something that could potentially hurt you. And people understood on that side of the Sea of Galilee, if they pass along that way, by the way, the word way in Greek is the word hodas, it describes a road, and there was a major road that passed right by those cliffs along that side of the Sea of Galilee. And when people would take that road, the demoniacs would barge out of the tombs and would terrorize those that were traveling on that road. And people understood. These men are exceedingly fierce. That region poses a risk to us. If we travel on that road, we're placing ourselves in jeopardy because of the demoniacs that are so exceedingly fierce. It will put our life in jeopardy if we pass by that way. That means that entire side of the Sea of Galilee was terrorized by these men. They were afraid to even pass on the major road that went by those cliffs because of the demoniacs that lived there. The entire region had been seized by fear. Well, on this particular day, which we read in Mark chapter 4, Jesus is going to the other side, and Jesus has a plan. Jesus is going to deliver the demoniacs of their demons, and when the demons leave, the fear is going to leave, and the entire region is going to be set free. So Jesus has a plan. He's going to liberate the demoniacs, and he's going to liberate the entire region that's living in their fear. That's the plan. So Jesus is headed to the other side. He's on the brink of a breakthrough. 
one of the greatest miracles to ever occur in his ministry. Keep all of that in mind when we read Mark chapter 4, verse 35. And the same day when the evening was come, he saith unto them, let's pass over unto the other side, the other side where this miracle is going to take place. And by the way, God's calling you to the other side. God's calling you to a breakthrough. God's calling you to a great demonstration of power, a great miracle. It's just in front of you. But the devil would like to derail you from getting there, just like he wanted to derail me from publishing that book. He wanted to derail Jesus from reaching the other side. He can't do it. He may try, but if you'll use your God-given authority, you can conquer every situation and sail through the roughest of waters and make it to your destination. That's what happened with Jesus. Look at it again. Verse 35. And the same day when the evening was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. Verse 36. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. Now look at verse 37. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and saying to him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly, and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind, the wind and the sea obey him? What an amazing text. But look, if you would, back at verse 37, where it says, And there arose a great storm of wind. These words, there arose in Greek, is the word genomai. The word genomai describes something, in this case, that takes you off guard or by surprise, something totally unexpected. Well, you have to remember that the majority of Jesus' disciples by profession were fishermen. They knew the lake. They knew the weather of the lake. They knew everything about that body of water. And if a natural storm had been brewing that night, it is not likely they would have got in the boat that night to go to the other side. Naturally, it was a great night for sailing. The skies were clear. There was no wind. The sea was calm. It was a great night for sailing. And then the Holy Spirit in this verse inserts the word genomai, which means out of nowhere. It was the last thing we would have anticipated. It completely took us off guard. It completely took us by surprise. It was a baffling experience. We don't know where it came from. It came out of nowhere. It was unexpected. It took us off guard. It completely took us by surprise. Suddenly, out of nowhere, there arose a great storm of wind. The word great is the word megas. It describes something unusually large. Even these fishermen who had encountered big storms had never seen a storm like this. This was beyond anything they had ever previously known. It was great. It was megas. It was a large, large storm. And the Bible calls it a storm of wind. The word wind is the Greek word lelaps, and it describes turbulence in the atmosphere. Wind. It doesn't say it was a thunder shower. It doesn't even say there was rain. In fact, there's no indication in this text that there was rain at all. It was a great storm of wind. Well, you can feel wind, but you can't see wind. You can feel turbulence, but you can't see turbulence. You can feel the effects of wind. You can feel the effects of turbulence. You know, have you ever been on an airplane when there's turbulence? Oh, nobody likes turbulence. Turbulence is very disturbing. Well, now there was turbulence in the atmosphere. Well, naturally, they may have tried to explain the origin of the storm that night because just to the north of the Sea of Galilee are some mountains. And if the atmospheric conditions abruptly change, it is a fact that the winds can come surging down from those mountains onto the Sea of Galilee. They can slap the sea and create quite a ruckus. And in fact, when those winds come down onto the Sea of Galilee, they hit the sea, they come down, and the waters come up, or the waters begin to be tossed to and fro by the wind that comes down from those mountains. And naturally, they may have tried to explain 
That is what was happening that night. But that is not what was happening. That's not what was happening. They were dealing with turbulence. They were dealing with wind. They were dealing with an invisible force that had come to assault them. Why? Because they were headed to the other side. The devil did not want Jesus to reach the other side. The devil knew if Jesus reached the other side of the lake to the country of the Gadarenes, Jesus was going to cast the demons out of the demoniacs. An entire region was going to be set free. So when Jesus was en route to the other side, the devil tried to derail him. This was an attempt of the devil to capsize the boat, to drown Jesus, and to drown the disciples in the middle of the lake in the middle of the night. Naturally, it was the perfect night for sailing. Perfect. When the Bible says, Genomai, suddenly, out of nowhere, it was the last thing we would have expected. It completely took us off guard. It completely took us by surprise. There arose our great, the word magus, enormous storm of laylapse, turbulence. We could feel it. We couldn't see it, we couldn't point at it, we couldn't name it, but we could feel the effects of it. Something invisible in the atmosphere was attacking us. And in fact, the Bible goes on to say that the waves beat into the ship. The words beat into tell us emphatically this was not a natural storm. Beat into is the Greek word epibalo, a compound of the word epi and the word balo. The word epi means over. The word balo means to throw or to cast or to hurl. When you compound the two words together, it is not just beat into, it is the picture of an entity. This normally is a word that would describe what a person does or a personality that is picking up the waves of the sea and epibalo is hurling them epi over against the ship. So on this particular night, in the middle of the lake, in the middle of the night, Jesus' ship becomes a target. And from every angle, something so unusual is taking place. The disciples have never seen anything like this, a great storm of turbulence unlike anything they have ever encountered. Suddenly waves are coming at them from every direction. Well, if it was a natural storm, the waves would all be moving in one direction. But on this night, they're the target. Waves are coming at them from every direction, from this side and this side and this side and this side, striking them from every side. And in fact, when you read it in the Greek text, the word waves is a Greek word kumata. It describes one succession of waves after another wave, after another wave, after another wave. It tells us how hopeless the disciples felt. It looked like there was no end to these waves, and these were monster waves that were literally lamb blasting them from every side like they were the target of some invisible fury that was being released against them. Wow, that's exactly what was taking place. You see, Jesus was on the brink of a breakthrough. Something magnificent was about to take place. And the devil was trying to derail Jesus and the disciples to stop them from getting to the other side. If you'll look at your own life, you'll find that most of the strange things that have happened to you have happened right when you were about to do something new or when you're about to have a breakthrough, when you're about to take a step of faith, or maybe you've already started your step of faith, and then bam, something happened that you would have never anticipated. I remember in the early years when we first began our work in the former Soviet Union, we had something really strange happen that I had never encountered, real spiritual turbulence. Someone began to commit sabotage against our ministry. We came into our office one day and someone had come through the offices during the night and had taken big, huge nails from the local railroad track and had nailed them through the keyboards of all the computers. They'd taken a hammer and burst all the screens out of the computers and left death threats all over the office telling people, if you continue to work for this ministry, you will be killed, we will murder you. It was horrible. And suddenly a spirit of fear was released in our team. Do you know when that happened? Right when we were having great spiritual breakthroughs. We were getting contracts for broadcasting, the teaching of the Bible to people that had never heard the teaching of the Bible. Letters were pouring into the office. We were really needing to respond to people's needs and we needed those computers to process all the mail 
And suddenly something happened that I would have never imagined in a million years. Someone came through the office and destroyed all the computers with big nails and hammers and left death threats all over the office. And I have to tell you that it took us back. We were quite shocked. And not just me and Denise, everyone in our office was in a state of panic. We were all stunned that someone had come through the office and had done this. And in fact, we were told in the death threats, if you don't stop what you're doing, someone here is going to die. You see, the devil was trying to derail us. He was trying to stop us. You know what that was? That was a my moment. There arose, suddenly, out of nowhere, a situation that I could have never imagined. It took us completely off guard, completely by surprise. It hit us from the side. There arose a great storm of wind. My friend, it was real wind. It was real turbulence. Now, when you come under assault, you can surrender or you can stand up and take authority over the wind and the waves. You're going to find that in Mark chapter 4, the disciples begin fighting waves. But the waves really was not the problem. The problem was wind. They were dealing with flesh and blood. They were dealing with the symptoms. They were wrangling with waves. I say they were binding waves and bailing water, binding waves and bailing water, binding waves and bailing water. But the problem is, if you even defeat one wave, there's another wave after that, and another wave after that, and another wave after that. And the devil wants you to focus on the symptoms because he knows he can just keep sending you more symptoms and more symptoms. He can distract you with symptomatic problems. You've got to look beyond the symptoms and deal with the wind. You've got to deal with the invisible force. And that's what we find in Mark chapter 4. And this leads back to my original story. I thought I had a money problem back in the early days of our ministry. And the Lord said, you don't have a money problem. I said, what kind of problem do I have? He said, go to Mark chapter 4 and I'll show you. And I saw so clearly we were on the edge of a breakthrough, just like you are, when suddenly there arose a great storm of wind and the waves began beating into their ship financially, we were sinking and I began fighting with the calculator. I began fighting with my checkbook, but my calculator and my checkbook was not my problem. The problem was a spiritual thief that was coming against us. And the problem was not solved until I moved beyond the symptoms and began to deal with the spiritual wind, the turbulence. And that's what you can do. You can take authority over the wind and over the waves. That's what I'm going to continue talking to you about in the next program. But right now we're out of time. I'll be back in just a moment, and I'm going to pray for you. Does life feel like a storm? Problems and situations surrounding you on every side, tossing you around? You don't have to live in the storm. In Rick Renner's teaching series, Taking Authority Over the Wind and the Waves, Rick reveals how the devil wants to derail your life, but you can overcome by taking authority over his spiritual attacks. In this five-part series, Rick teaches that God wants you to have breakthrough, but oftentimes the attack comes right before your success. As you walk with your spiritual eyes open, you'll be able to recognize why spiritual attacks come and how you can fight against them. When you take authority and control your thoughts and trust in God, you will overcome. Available in digital or physical formats starting at just $10. In addition to this teaching series, you can also receive the book, Dress to Kill. In this book, Rick answers the hard questions about the often misunderstood subject of spiritual warfare. Dress to Kill reveals how the ancient Roman soldier's armor uniquely represents the way we should prepare for spiritual battles today. This comprehensive study on spiritual warfare teaches you how to put on the full armor of God and the importance each piece of the armor plays in defeating the enemy. This beautifully bound 500-page book is the definitive Bible study available on spiritual warfare and is available for just $22. Don't miss this special offer, taking authority over the wind and waves in your life and or the companion book, Dress to Kill. Call now, 1-800-742-5593 or go to renner.org to order. Get these two powerful resources today. Call or go online now. My name is Joel Renner, coming to you right from Moscow, Russia. And I want to say thank you to all of our ministry partners. It's because of your support that we can help people fighting addictions get their families and their lives back. All around the world, there is a huge drug crisis. Maybe you know someone who has suffered or is suffering from alcohol 
and drug addictions. The cycle of addiction is a terrible thing. Because of the generous support of our partners, we have been able to join with several Christian rehab centers where men and women can be trained to reintegrate into the workplace, receive the medical help they need, and have a support system in place so they're not isolated and alone. Because of your generous support, we have seen people with hepatitis C get well, many who lost their family relationships get back together, and many others who were on heroin, cocaine, and other drugs receive freedom and become complete people again. This has been made possible with partners who support our work. Your gift makes this kind of a difference. These people need your help. Please call 1-800-742-5593 or go online to randy.org to give a gift of any size. Because of your support, we are able to make a huge difference in people's lives. If you're under assault, I want to tell you it's a signal that you're on track. The devil's trying to stop you from reaching God's destiny for your life. If your business is under assault, or you see your kids or your grandchildren are under attack, hey, it's a good sign. God has something good planned and they're en route to get there. And the devil's trying to stop it. The good news is he does not have the authority to stop you or anybody else. You have more authority than the wind and the waves if you'll stand up and exercise your authority. In just a moment, I'm going to pray for you for the wind to stop and for the waves to be still. I'm going to stand in agreement with you. You have authority that has been given to you in Jesus Christ. And if you're under assault, be encouraged. First of all, the devil's not going to win. Secondly, it means the devil is terrified of what God is about to do in your life. Good times are in front of you. That's what an assault usually means. That's an indicator. Hey, I'm offering you my series, which is called Taking Authority Over the Wind and Waves in Your Life. It's five parts, comes in multiple formats with a study guide. Be sure to order yours today. We're also offering you my book called Dress to Kill, A Biblical Approach to Spiritual Warfare and Armor. Get your copy today. But let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over the wind. I take authority over the waves. I tell you to be still in Jesus' name. And Father, I thank you that you are leading my friend to the other side to a place of victory, a great spiritual breakthrough. And I declare to you in the name of Jesus, you're going to make it to the other side. You're going to make it in Jesus' name. By the way, if you need anybody to pray with you, let us know. We'll pray with you. We'll stand with you. that You're going to make it to the other side. Hey, remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there's power. Let God's word do its work in you today. It's really the king's word. And I'll see you in the next program. Thank you for watching this broadcast. For more information on product resources or to learn how you can partner with this ministry, please connect with us at renner.org or call 1-800-742-5593. Also, please be sure to visit us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.